Hi, this is Bob T with Speedboat Magazine at the Miami International Boat Show, and this is 2022. I'm here with Nick Peterson from Mercury Racing and Mercury Racing Propeller, and we're going to go over some of the propellers that they have to offer today. We're going to start right now with the very popular Max 5. Nick? Yeah. Sure. So right behind us is our whole lineup of Max 5. So it started out as a 15 inch, and since then we've grown to offer both the 15 and a quarter and the 15 and a quarter inch short tube. Um, it was originally developed as an outboard prop, but through a lot of extensive testing, and Bob Teague was a huge part of that, um, they've adapted a lot more to the stern drive market. Um, so great prop, especially if you're coming from a Bravo and running over 80 miles an hour, um, you can really hit some great mid-range as well as top end speed numbers. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between, um, you, obviously you have the diameter difference here, but mm -hmm. let's talk about the short tube. Sure, for the short tube, uh, when we stepped up the diameter, there was a few applications that had too much stern lift. Uh, so by cutting down that tube, really alleviate that and let the stern of the boat settle. Okay, we have the Bravo 1 LT, which is pretty much a traditional Bravo with the vent tubes and long LT stands for long tube. So what's the purpose of this? So for guys that are interested in uh, slow speed performance, you know, keep, keeping the boat up on plane at low speeds for water sports, things like that, and also great hole shot. Uh, the LT is a great option. Uh, we sell a lot to the walleye market, so guys that have three, four, even five batteries in the back of the boat, as well as a kicker hanging off the back, that extra stern lift really helps them out. Okay, and then you got the Pro Max outboard. Yep, Pro Max is more of a legacy prop. Um, we run a lot on our bass boats. Um, a lot of Optimax, 250 XS, 300 XS on 20 to 22 foot bass and flats boats. Okay, Mercury Racing also offers a full line of cleavers uh, not only the big stern drive cleavers for the M6s and M8 drives, but also a whole line of cleavers for uh, the different horsepower ranges of the outboards. What's shown here is, uh, I believe it's the 300 horsepower cleaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we took the same technology in the fully CNC machine stern drive cleaver, and a few years back we introduced them for the outboard market with the 400R. Since then we've adapted it in a 300 horsepower thickness and a 500 horsepower thickness to suit the 300R and the 450R. And they're, they're available in everything from 26 all the way up to 40 pitch, uh, two different rakes, and a whole slew of different diameter options. Okay, so we have this propeller also now available up to um, 600 horse. 600 horse for those Bravo drives. Yeah, for a Bravo drive. Mm -hmm. So you have an application uh, that has uh, let's say Mercury Racing uh, 600 SCIs and yep. Cleaver would might be the propeller that you would run. Um, and basically the horsepower range is based off of the blade thickness primarily. Correct. Yeah, that's a proprietary thickness curve. Um, and so since those Bravo drives have an inch and a quarter shaft, uh, we extended that thickness curve up to 600. So for those guys running uh, a lot of cats, maybe a fountain, and they really want that extra couple miles an hour on top end, we'll offer a 600 horsepower rated CNC cleaver. So while we're on that subject, and especially with the cleavers, there's really three things um, that you look at in a propeller, actually four. Um, you're looking, first of all, uh, at the diameter, mm -hmm. first number, okay? Then you're looking at the pitch. That's basically pitch is a theoretical number. Um, if a propeller was run a one-to-one, in other words, 100% uh, efficiency, yep. one revolution would be that many inches forward at one. So if it's a 26 pitch, it'd be 26 inches. You got it. Uh, it's not really that good, but it's just what, it's what the theory is. Now, the next thing is rake. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about rake for a second. Sure. So rake is really uh, the angle of the blades, and that translates to more bow lift. As we're getting into more and more step V-bottom hulls especially, they run really flat and they're stepping up their game in the rake. Uh, but catamarans, boats that pack a lot of air naturally, can run a more flat rake. Uh, 15 rake is the most popular. We've also gone down to 12 for some of the shaft drive offshore race boats. Okay, so the rakes available are 12, 15, 18, and 21. You got it. And so uh, the more rake you have, the more lift you have. And it depends on which way the propellers are rotating in a, in a, in a twin engine operation. Yep. Um, generally speaking, if your propellers are rotating out, it's going to lift the tail. If they're rotating in, it's going to lift the bottom. Yep. Okay. So, and then the other thing is, fourth thing, blade thickness. 
blade thickness is designed to withstand a certain horsepower. Uh, available all the way from 300 in the outboard, all the way up to 1500 uh, in the big stern drive. That's correct. Yep. Uh, first of all, we have the Bravo 1 FS, which stands for four stroke, and uh, four stroke refers to stro four stroke outboard. Actually. Right. It's, uh, it's derived from the original Bravo 1 propeller. Lightly, uh, lightly lab. You could say that, right. yeah, so that is a bunch of our tricks on it. Uh, we developed this prop about six years ago for the outboard market exclusively, uh, more in line with the rise of the four strokes. Uh, so it's got a shortened tube to give some bow lift. It's got four vent holes for planing performance, and then it's got our pro finish, which is about halfway between a stock and a lab finish. But it's zero balanced, as all the cup heights true. And lo and behold, it's another prop that has uh, been working great for us on stern drive applications. So older Bajas and things like that that might be running Mirages could often switch to the Bravo FS and have great results. And typically speaking, those boats are the, a deeper prop shaft, Correct. so they work better with the, with the shorter tube mm -hmm. uh, that the FS has because they don't need it to get on plane. Yep. Okay, so now we're going to one of the more one of the best sellers, believe it or not, on Mercury, the Rev Four. Yep. So and as this is the Rev Four XP, which is the Mercury Racing version. Yep. Yep. As of last year, the Rev Four XP took the crown for our number one selling prop, and of course that has to do with the success of the center console market. Uh, so if you walk around the show here in Miami. I would say at least 75% of the boats here that are center consoles will be running the Rev4 XP. It's another one of our mainline prop derivatives that has our pro finish um, and has really taken off for us. So going from a standard Revolution 4 to a Rev4 XP, guys can usually gain two to three miles an hour, but also have the availability of half inch pitch increments so they can really dial in their setup. And that was in high demand because this propeller was originally, this casting was originally only available up to a certain pitch and now they have castings that go up to 27 pitch. Yep, so we have a racing exclusive 27 pitch casting which will offer all the way up to a 27 and a half for some of these center consoles that want to run well over 90 miles an hour. And last but not least, here with Mercury Racing is the Inertia Eco XP. Nick, where's this prop box? Sure, so we're fortunate to offer a few different propeller lines that aren't just for top speed as well. Uh, the Eco being one of the most popular, and that's for great fuel economy, also in this uh, center console market. This prop has really exploded for us over the last three or so years. Uh, everything from 300 all the way up to the 450. Uh, we'll run these on center consoles, mostly for guys that are doing big runs, big charter runs, and putting a lot of miles out uh, in a day. They want to be getting this better fuel economy. So it has a little larger blade. Correct. Um, almost like a mirage, so to speak. Yeah. And, um, but it's a three blade. Sure, it's really a lifter. So it's a three blade, it's got a big 16 inch diameter, big blade area, and also a really long flared barrel. So through the mid-range, it's lifting that whole boat up out of the water, and that's where you get your efficiency from. We're talking about the handcrafted uh, cleaver propellers done at Mercury Racing, and, and uh, right here we have a picture of one being built by Andy, and uh, why don't you tell us about this whole process, the sure. castings and the tool. Yeah, so Mercury is really fortunate that we're pretty much exclusively vertically integrated. Um, so from the wax mold process all the way to the finished prop, we have control over that whole process. So all of the Mercury stainless steel castings are cast at Plant 98, which is right across town in Fond du Lac. Uh, we receive those raw castings in-house at racing and start from scratch, whether it's a pro finish, or a lap finish, uh, we take those props and fine tune them 100% by hand. Um, CNC cleavers are a little bit different because those are a completely CNC machine. Uh, those don't start from a light casting of that propeller. But that process really changes the game for us in that it means that every single blade, every measurable surface is the exact same across every parameter, and that's where you get your efficiency from. So this propeller, the, the large cleavers, um, M6, M8, um, they start out as a CNC propeller, Correct. built on a CNC machine. Yep. So you're starting with something that's pretty identical every time, repeatable. And uh, unlike in the past, you could get two different propellers uh, that were actually done by two different guys that would be different. Yep. But at least with this CNC process, you get a starting point. Yeah. And then they're fine tuned from yep. there. So the craftsman aspect of it is really making every single blade the exact same to a certain spec. And the CNC machine just takes that to a whole nother level. 
Right, it makes it easier to get to that yep, point. Absolutely. As a point to when they were originally doing it by hand, they were grinding the blades mm -hmm. to that point. Yep. Okay, this is Bob Teague with Speedboat Magazine at the 2022 Miami International Boat Show with Nick Peterson from Mercury Racing. We really appreciate the time we spent with you today, Nick. Great to be Thank with you, you Bob, as always.